All right. I congratulate all the challenge winners as well. Um, now we're going to have the challenge winners uh, presentations. And uh, the first presentation uh, would be by Akash Kumar et al. Uh, with the title PC Band Point Cloud Based Deep Affinity Network for 3D Multi Object Tracking. Uh, hi, Akash, and welcome. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, so yeah, can you see the screen? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So I'm Akash Kumar. Uh, I'm presenting joint work with Jyoti Kenny and Dr. Mubalak Shah from University of Central Florida and Dr. Ajmal Mia from University of Western Australia. Our work is PC Den, Point Cloud Based uh, Deep Efficiency Network for 3D Multi Object Therapy. Um, so, the motivation is uh, there are several tracking methodologies uh, already proposed for 2D multi object tracking. And recently, however, 3D multi object tracking is gaining popularity due to its application. In, Self driving car and robot navigation. And 3D LiDAR is actually a reliable model to, to perform the uh, 3D multi object tracking, uh, which captures 3D information in the form of point clouds. And 3D point clouds uh, preserve structural information and avoid perspective distortion, unlike 2D uh, data. LiDAR is becoming widely available in automobiles, which are assisting in iPhones. So we use the point cloud data uh, for this method from Kitty and also. Uh, trade on the GRDB data set and show you the results. So uh, our contribution is we actually extending our previous work that is deep affinity network. It was published in KME. So this work was on 2D tracking. And so we extended to 3D multi object tracking. So in this work, we are using PointNet to extract the features from the point cloud data. And uh, we got some competitive results on KT data set as well as GRDB data set. And so first of all, I will describe uh, the deep affinity network or previous work. And then I will describe how we are building on it and extending it to 3D multi-object tracking. So uh, what we do in this part is given the image and the detection. So we use the centers of the detection and the images we pass it through the VJG, uh, extended VJG 16, uh, we extended VJG network, and then we get the features uh, out of there. So we use the centers and extract the features at different layers of the convolution layers and perform one by one convolution layer and concatenate these features. And do it, we do it for the consecutive frame and perform parameter sharing uh, between these two networks. And then which is uh, then followed by exhaustive pairing permutation. And then uh, we perform compression network, which is nothing but uh, uh, five layers of convolutions, which compress this module into uh, M matrix, which is of size uh, number of objects in frame one into number of objects in frame two. So we here we fix this number of objects to 80 by 80. Uh, and given this M, we augment it to two uh, matrix M1 and M2 by adding extra column and extra row, which actually accounts for the objects that are entering in the scene and leaving the scene. And then uh, we perform row wise uh, softmix on this M1, which results in A1, and then perform column wise softmix on this M2, which results in A2. And then we use ground truth to compute the loss uh, with respect to this A1 and A2, and then train the model. And moreover, and this A, when we actually uh, compute an uh, inconsistent, a consistency loss between this A1 head and A2 head. So A1 head is the trimmed version of A1, in which we ignore this column, and A2 head is a trimmed version of A2 in which we are ignoring this row so that we can uh, do consistency in, so that these are actually the different version, uh, different uh, augmented version of the same matrix. Uh, so, and the last function sorry, is follows. The forward direction loss encourages the correct identity association from the previous frame to the current frame. So G1 is uh, a trimmed version of the ground truth where we uh, ex uh, trim extra row and so that we make it consistent with the A1 and then compute the loss with respect to uh, A1 and G1. And then the backward association loss actually ensures the current identity association from current frame to the previous frame. And uh, the, we use A2 and G2. So G2 is the trimmed version of, again, the ground truth. We have very extra, uh, trimmed the extra column. And then we compute the loss. And the third loss is the consistency loss. We have rebuff any inconsistency between these uh, two, A1 and A2. And then the final loss is the assembly loss that suppress any non-maximum between forward and backward association for affinity predictions. 
uh, so given that word what we do is actually extend it for the uh, 3d so what we do we use the same uh, affinity estimator but we change the feature extraction method so given two point clouds uh, with their detections and uh, the point net actually extract the feature so here what we do is actually I uh, use the detections and crop the objects. Like we pass one object at a time and generate the features for frame one, and likewise we generate the features for frame two, and then uh, get the exhaust repairing permutation, and then perform the compression uh, network, which results in this M matrix. But here we actually increase the size of the M to 100 by 100 to accommodate more objects, and likewise we repeat the same process as I described before to train this model. So this architecture is consists of point cloud based feature extraction, this exhaust repairing permutation, and the affinity estimation. Uh, on the Kitty data set, uh, we first trained uh, so that in fact, uh, which has the 21 total sequence. So we use 12 sequence for training, nine for validation, and it has 29 sequence for test, which is mostly a car and pedestrian objects. Uh, so each sequence consists of 300 to 600 frames. And for uh, test data set, we use actually detections from our network because the, the detections given by the KT was poor. So training on the KT data set, um, this is the uh, training loss and the accuracy. Uh, and the results are as follows. So we got 81.96 MOT um, um, uh, test uh, results of KT, but using the RRC detection. So when we are using the detection that are provided by the, by the KT, results were 67.5. Uh, so these are the qualitative results um, on KT data set for car. Uh, we got like pretty good results and IDs is consistent. There are like very few ID sources. And then and these are on the pedestrians. These are okay. So then we uh, uh, came to know about this competition and trained it on this JRDB data set, uh, which is two LIDAR and uh, it is already described 360 degree. Uh, camera IME sensor and position and velocity. So uh, we are using the point cloud data and then we trained it, these are the training loss and the accuracy. Uh, so validation results are as follows. So we use the validation sequences that are recommended by on the JRDB data set website. So which is actually a combination of outdoor and indoor scenery. So on validation data, we got 88.06 MOT and you can see uh, the model performs um, good on both the outdoor scenes and the indoor scenes. And uh, and uh, test results on leaderboard are as follows. Uh, so we got uh, 22.56 MOTA on the test results uh, because uh, detections were poor. So they, they are maybe coming from some network and these are the predictions. So they, each detection is a confident score. So what we are doing is actually using 0.4 as a threshold and we're using all the detections about 0.4. Uh, and then uh, we got these results, uh, 22.56 MOT, and this is the top on the leaderboard. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much.